Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the session. We are just waiting for a few more participants to um, come onto the call and then we'll get started. So please bear with us. Appreciate you taking the time to join us on a Saturday morning. The sun's shining outside of my window at the moment, so I think it's going to be a lovely day as we get to progress through the weekend. The webinar is going to begin shortly, so please be patient as we wait for more attendees to join. If you do have any technical difficulties, please pop them in the chat box that's um, on the bottom of your screen. Um, you should be able to find it. It's the box that's just got one speech bubble uh, attached to it. Um, I'm on my laptop at the moment. It's in the centre of my screen at the bottom. Okay, I've just had um, notice from my colleagues who are working behind the scenes to say we've got our participants with us. So um, I'm going to start the webinar. So welcome to Crawley College. My name is um, Vicky Illingworth. I'm principal at Crawley. And I'm so sorry that we're not welcoming you on site this morning to see our facilities, to meet our student ambassadors and to meet our amazing staff team. We are, we are working to keep everyone as safe as possible. And when we're able to, we'll invite you back to see us in person. Um, right, I'm proud to welcome to our event, event today. Over the next 20 minutes or so, uh, my team and I will be introducing you to Crawley College, who we are, what you can study with us, what life is like as a student, and how we can support you when you're with us. My colleague Dean and I will be sharing this with you. But before we get started properly, I'd just like to share a couple of things about how the presentation is going to work. As participants in the online event, you're all muted, so we can't hear you. If you have any questions for us or queries, we'd love to hear them. Um, so please pop them in the question and answer um, function in the presentation. Again, that's an icon that's at the bottom of your screen, um, which is two speech bubbles that say Q&A. Um, pop your questions in here and we'll try and answer them as we go along and type answers into the um, question and answer section. Um, if we can't get to them during the presentation, we will take them at the end. Um, so please stay with us and then we can, um, we can answer those questions then. As I said earlier, if you do have any technical difficulties, please pop the queries into the chat function um, and we'll, um, the team behind the scenes will try and help you to fix the problems. The session this morning is being recorded, so you can access it again if you want to, um, and it will be able to be viewed from our website from Monday, um, the 9th of November. And we're also going to work on a transcript of the questions and answers so that you can refer back to that if you need to. So now it's time for me to hand over to my colleague, um, Dean Winter. Vice Principal, he's going to take you through the next part of the presentation. Good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to talk about Ofsted. Uh, wow, it was an amazing achievement uh, for us all, uh, and it actually makes Houston College one of only a few colleges in the country to be awarded an outstanding grade in every single area. Ofsted recognises that students, employers, and staff will be proud to be part of such a brilliant and vibrant and successful college community that changes lives through learning. It gives our students the best opportunity to achieve their, their dreams. Most importantly, it gave our students an opportunity to shine and show everyone how brilliant they were. So what makes Cordy so special? It's quite simple, really. We put the students at the heart of what we do. We make sure their ambitions and their, and their ambitions drive our vision to be outstanding. We work constantly with students, employers and the community to develop and improve the facilities and the programs we offer to provide the greatest opportunities for our students to progress onto the next level or into their dream job. When you're in the college, you can feel the creativity and innovation around you. Above all, the college is part of a wider community and it plays such an important part in what makes Crawley special. I'm now gonna talk a little bit about our STEM building, science, technology, engineering and maths, or STEM for short. These skills are becoming more and more important for the world of work. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our new STEM Centre opening early next year. The STEM Centre will be a new three floor purpose built teaching hub in which we aim to provide a new cutting edge facility that delivers an exceptional level of skills development that supports both the aspirations of our community and the skills needs of our local, regional and national employers into the future. The development of the STEM Centre will be closely linked with the growth plans for Crawley and the regeneration proposals mean that Crawley College will be providing training to meet both the short-term needs and longer sustainable growth plans for the area and the community. The STEM Centre will not just support engineering and IT, but all curriculum areas within the college. 
as the emergence of technology has an increasing influence in all areas of our working life. It will give Crawley College a strong local identity as a major provider of STEM and will extend our presence in the community for promoting STEM focused opportunities for training and employment for all ages that will be recognised as centre of excellence. Initial design of the STEM centre gives a flavour to the type of ex exper experimental applied learning that will motivate and develop our learners as part of an outstanding experience. Designated areas such as robotics, 3D printing, electrical and electronics labs and IT labs will provide high level skills development in outstanding facilities. Technologies such as virtual reality and augmented reality will be used to improve the experience for learners and bring design projects, scenarios and environments to life. Science, environmental and employment research hubs linked to live projects such as the proposed Crawley and regional developments will help our learners develop an understanding of the world of work and the skills required to take up those opportunities. The STEM Centre will bring a new dimension to Crawley College that will equip our learners well for the challenges of the 21st century and we are really excited about this opening. Over to you Vicky. Thank you, Dean. Um, we've got a couple of questions that are starting to pop into the chat, so I'll just make sure that my um, colleagues are on that. Um, Nick and Carol are working behind the scenes with Jean to be able to answer some of those questions, so I'm sure you'll start to get some answers soon. We've got a number of questions about how to apply and what happens if you don't get your grades, and we'll touch on that later in the presentation as well. So um, I'm now going to talk to you about the kinds of courses that you can study with us at Crawley College. I'm going to give you a flavour of the offer. So first of all, I'll talk about our um, vocational and academic um, diplomas, which include, for example, things like the BTEC extended diplomas or the um, certificate courses. I'm going to touch on apprenticeships to talk to you about uh, what, they're in, what is involved in those programmes and Dean's going to share some information there. And then we're also going to talk to you about T-levels. We're one of only about 48 providers in the country that were chosen to deliver the first wave of T-levels this year, and there's more to come. But before I start talking about T-levels, first up is diplomas. Um, so you're probably familiar with the um, diplomas. Um, they're occupation focused qualifications. So they're set in subject sector areas or particular um, skills areas. And they allow us to deliver qualifications that are a mix of practical, practical and technical knowledge, which is gained through working in the classroom to develop your theory knowledge and skills and understanding, but also applying that in the workshops or um, specialist spaces that we have across the campus. These courses are available from level one through to level three. So level three is the equivalent of doing three A levels. Um, level uh, two is the equivalent of doing GCSEs and level one is kind of um, the lower end of a GCSE qualification. So there is a mix of things that we can offer that is there for everybody. So one of the questions we got was what happens if you don't get your GCSE grades? We would work with you to give you the advice and guidance you need to be able to place you on the course that's most appropriate for you and give you the opportunity to increase your GCSE grades, particularly in maths and English. As I mentioned earlier, the level three qualifications are the equivalent of three A levels generally, and that means that they also qualify for UCAS points if you're thinking about progressing to university. Um, so that gives a really solid foundation for students who want to progress and study at degree level. We also offer higher education um, at Crawley College and across the Chichester College group, and there's a second webinar that's taking place later on this morning that will tell you more about that if you'd like to find out. So if you've got an idea of the kind of subject area you want to study or the kind of job that you want to go into, um, a diploma qualification is really useful to give you the grounding and the introduction you need to working in that industry. Equally, if you're not quite sure, for example, you might want to work in construction, but you don't know which trade or service you might want to go into, we have a course that will allow you to taste all of those different trades and services, and then you can specialise as you can progress through your course options. As well as the level one to level three provision, we also have a dedicated provision for foundation learning for those students who are working below level one, which is a really creative and innovative um, programme that we've put together using a range of different vocational areas and including volunteering options um, to provide a really vibrant programme for students. So you can find out more about all of those programmes on our website. But I'm now just going to touch on um, our apprenticeship. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I'm now just going to touch on the way in which we deliver some of those technical skills. I mentioned earlier that the diplomas are a mix of um, theory based stuff in classrooms and also applying your skills in specialist play, um, facilities. We have really lucky to have some really great spaces on campus. Dean's just mentioned the new STEM building, which is going to add to that portfolio. 
but we have got a dedicated restaurant and cafe space that is student run. Um, we've got a number of training kitchens that support our hospitality programs. Um, we've got specialist construction workshops that are spread across the campus um, that are bespoke to um, electrical, plumbing, uh, carpentry and joinery, furniture, brickwork that really enable students to practice their skills and get what they need to move into the industry. We run a range of motor vehicle fabrication and welding programs and they have dedicated workshop spaces for those. And as Dean just touched on, we do have um, engineering workshops with a range of different kits for students to use. Um, and it's important that students get to apply their knowledge and use industry standard equipment to be able to do that. So thank you, Nefri. I'm now going to move on to the next slide. Hopefully it'll pop up in a second and tell you a little bit about T-levels. So I mentioned earlier we were one of the only, um, one of a few providers that have been selected across the country to deliver T-levels this academic year. And they are a really exciting new programme. They've been designed um, by employers and working in partnership with education providers to give learners a real opportunity to develop the knowledge and skills they need, but complement that with an extended work placement. So they're really work ready or university ready when they finish their two year study programme. So this course is a mix of classroom learning and on the job experience. Um, one of the unique things about it is that your students will do um, around about a 45 day work placement that can be with up to two employers across their two year program. And when they've completed it, it's the equivalent of three A levels. So there are core cool units that students will study in year one that are mainly assessed through exams. And there are um, units of specialism in year two that have got a mix of synoptic assessment and coursework and exam assessment as well. Um, so it's really exciting that we're part of that programme and we've started the digital programme in Chich um, Chichester yes. and Crawley this year and the students are really enjoying the opportunities they've got. They do qualify for UCAS points so you can progress to university with a T-level and from September 21 we'll be introducing more T-level programmes in pathways including construction because there's a different construction programme starting in September which covers building services engineering, digital, um, education and childcare and health and science. Um, so there's two new provisions that we're providing from September 21. So that's really exciting. I'm now gonna hand over to Dean, who'll share an insight into our apprenticeship provision, and also talk to you a little bit about why maths and English are important skills and qualifications. Dean, next up to you. Thank you, Vicky. <laughs> apprenticeships. Apprenticeships are a brilliant way to learn. Uh, and in fact, I can speak with personal experience because I was an apprentice at Crawley College a long, long time ago in construction. and It did me very well. So what's the difference with an apprenticeship? Well, an apprenticeship is you'll be working with a company. It's sort of the reverse of the T-level in a sense, because you'll be in the workplace probably for four days a week. You'd have chosen a particular career path and then you'll come into college uh, and study your technical knowledge. Um, you'll work along both the experienced staff in your workplace, alongside your experienced staff in the workplace, and also the skilled staff that we have in the, in the college. You'll work towards a, a specific skill set although you will have studies and qualifications that give you wider skills uh, that you can use if you, if you decide to change your route. Of course, with apprenticeships, one of the best thing, of course, is that you'll earn a wage. Uh, you'll also get some holiday pay if you're very lucky, which is brilliant. Um, and, and apprenticeships are, are, are growing all of the time. I mean, I can't think how many apprenticeships there must be, but there are hundreds of apprenticeships going from level two all the way up to degree level. They'll probably take anything between one and four years to complete, depending on what subject that you choose. So a really exciting way to learn, a way of combining the world of work with you continuing to gain knowledge. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. And of course, for an apprenticeship, it will mean that you, you need to either get that job, we can work with you to, to get those jobs, or you can be out there sending your CV, CVs out to companies uh, and trying to get those jobs in the first place and come to us. I've got to go back to Ofsted, because what did Ofsted say about apprenticeships at Crawley College? They said that em employers value greatly the positive impact apprentices' new skills and knowledge developed at Crawley College have on their workplace. So, so it's a really valuable asset for employers. And it also should come as no surprise that the Chichester College Group has the highest achievement rates for apprenticeships in Sussex and Hampshire. I'm now going to talk to you a little bit about English and maths. Um, English and maths is such an important thing uh, for communication skills and for problem solving, and it enables people to progress onto the higher levels of studying into employment. We will continue to support you with your English and maths as part of your programme until you've achieved at least a grade four in both maths and English. 
This will vastly improve your progress and your employment prospects. Okay. Thank you, Dean. So we're now back to um, looking at what we can offer as part of our experience at Crawley College. And I'm really proud of the work that our student union do um, and how they've raised the student voice to be um, work with us collaboratively as a leadership team to develop how we run as a college and to have some key input into decision making. Um, the student voice is really vibrant. As Dean said earlier, students are at the heart of what we do. We can just move on to the next slide. It will showcase for you our student union. Um, we've got a student union president who is Rhea Voice, who works with us regularly to do a whole host of different activities. Each course um, that we run at the college um, elects a student rep as part of their ACES programme. And that student rep is the ambassador for that programme. They'll meet regularly with the head of learning who runs the courses, who runs that curriculum area to provide feedback to us on what we're doing well, what we could be doing better and celebrate and share what's um, what they're enjoying about their programme and time in college. From that cohort or that group of student reps, we would then elect a student executive and the student executive works across the campus, almost as super reps, alongside the college leadership team um, to be able to really make a difference in some of our decision making and activities that um, we take part in. So, for example, those reps will be trained so that they can take part in lesson observations um, with members of the observation team so they can provide feedback about the teaching and learning experience that our students are getting. They also sit regularly on recruitment panels, so they make decisions about um, the staff that we're recruiting and provide their feedback from that perspective. And also some of the bigger things. So when we're talking about environmental sustainability, for example, the students will be involved in what we're doing as part of that green agenda, what we're doing in terms of meeting um, the needs of everybody from an equality, diversity and inclusion perspective. So we really value the input that we get from our students and the student union is very much alive um, on Crawley campus. We move on to share a little bit about how we make that voice come to life. Um, I've mentioned the student union, I've mentioned the student executive. Um, we also have regular student conferences that take place um, three times in through the academic year, where all of the students reps get together to be able to talk and make a difference. Student executive will be um, much more frequently on a weekly or fortnightly basis because they contribute greatly to the kinds of activities that we're planning, whether that's charity events, um, whether that's volunteering um, or whether it's contributing something to the college community through litter picking um, and working to enhance the environment that we're all working um, and enjoying together. As well as contributing to the college community and the local community in Crawley, um, we also have a really exciting extra programme. So we believe whilst it's really important when you come to college to focus on getting your qualifications and develop the skills that you need to be able to progress onto your chosen job or university place um, or your next course of study, it's also important that you're developing the skills that you need um, once you leave college. So whether that could be organisational skills, communication, time management, resilience, confidence. We try to provide as many opportunities as we can for people to access um, experiences that will help them to do that. And one of the ways is by um, getting involved in trips and activities. Um, so if we move on to the next slide, it gives you a flavour of some of the things that we have been doing um, pre-lockdown, but also some of the things that we've got planned post-lockdown when we can be together. At this point, I'm going to ask my colleague Nick Mercado, who's group head for student services, to jump in on the chat as well, um, because Nick's been actively involved in some of the activities that are shown on the screen at the moment. So we do run a range of clubs and societies to support um, well, emotional well-being and so on, but we also run trips in the UK and abroad. Nick, I don't know whether you can share um, some of the kinds of things that we've been up to and maybe some of your experiences supporting students on the trips. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, morning, everybody. Um, so we run a lot of events throughout the year um, and plenty of students can get involved. Um, we run weekly clubs and sports teams that are open to all students, um, including things like football, cricket, I mean, that's just to name a few. Um, what's really key here, though, is linking back to what Vicky was saying about student voice. Um, we, at the beginning of the academic year, we talk to our students about what sorts of activities and what groups they want to really run um, as part of our student leadership team. And these are all student-led activities. So the, this is based on feedback on an annual basis um, from the student body on the sorts of things that they would like to see. So for the last couple of years, um, we've run a really successful student-led LGBT group. 
um, which is supported by staff and the student experience team, but is a student-led group where students um, are able to get together, talk about things that impact on them as, as um, a particular group of young people um, involved in their community and about um, and how they can raise awareness um, of things that impact on them as young people within an LGBT community. So um, uh, that's, that's just one example of what we do. And then on the, you know, on the other side of it, uh, we talk about trips and going abroad. Um, this uh, last year, we took six students um, from Crawley along with others from the rest of the Chichester College group to Kenya. Kenya is a trip that we do every year um, with the Chichester College group. It's a two week trip. Um, and it involves a, a volunteering opportunity where we work with the school in a, in a town called Nakuru. And um, it's a fantastic eye-opening experience for students to really get involved somewhere out of their comfort zone, develop leadership skills, um, that sense of community, um, that sense of kind of having a very, very different experience than they would have, um, you know, not, not been given the opportunity to do that before. So. Uh, absolutely brilliant. I've been on three of those trips now and I've really enjoyed every single one of them. Fantastic, Nick. Thank you. And if you could sum up in three words the um, experience we create for students at Crawley College outside of their main studies, what would it be? Uh, amazing. Um, Eye-opening. Um, and hmm, you put me on the spot now, Vicky. Um, so can you get away with three because you said I three words. Thank you. Three. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, Nick. Thank you for your contribution there. So we're just going to move on. Obviously, students are something that are at the heart of everything we do. And I think that message is coming through loud and clear. We wouldn't have a college unless we had our student community. Um, and we need to ensure that we're doing the best that we can to deliver the most opportunities for them. I'm really proud of our students and their participation in learning and college life continued during the first lockdown. Um, and the where they worked remotely and they participated in a whole host of different activities online. The end of year survey for 2020 shows how much the team at Crawley contributed to keep learning going and ensure that our students got the support they needed. Making learning accessible to everyone is a key part of our ethos at college and creating an inclusive environment is really important. So I'd just like to share, um, I take a few moments to share the support that we can provide at Crawley College. We have a dedicated team of additional support um, members of staff that is made up of learning support assistants and um, also specialist lecturers. So they work in class and out of class to provide the support that might be detailed within an education, health and care plan um, for a learner moving into college from school environment. Um, but they also do much more. We work when we get a referral from a student or a student comes in to see us to say they need support. We would look at their individual needs and the team would identify what's best for that student and how we can best support them. We do that through a variety of different things. So it could be through mentoring, it could be through small group tuition, it could be through one-to-one -one support. Um, it could be a whole host of um, things that we could provide. It may just be providing us quiet room for somebody to go and sit in or work in um, during the day because they feel they need to have a space that's free from distraction and they can focus on getting their work done or just taking some time to chill out and come away from the main buzz of the college. We also want to ensure that we're equipping students with the skills to be independent learners and to be able to contribute um, to the college um, and to their communities they progress on from us. So we do have a range of adaptive uh, equipment and assistive technologies as well to help support the um, independent skills that students need as they progress and they develop. There's a couple of questions that have come into the chat so I'm just going to pick some of these up and I may bring in Jean who is our um, learning support manager who's also on the call as well. So Jean, I don't know whether you're there, but we've got a question here about um, dyslexia. So I have dyslexia and I'm a bit worried about how I'm going to get on at college. What support can we provide for a student with dyslexia? Um, what we would, normally, we would normally meet with the student and discuss the types of support they've had at school or previous um, education places. And then we would look at, we can um, look at classroom support, out of class support, working with the teachers to make sure that work's um, prepared in advance, so notes are prepared in advance, so working with the teachers. So we try and include the student in that meeting so that we've got everything in place before they arrive so that the teachers and all the support team are aware. Jean, that's fantastic, thank you. We've also got another question in here as well. Um, my son has an education, health and care plan. What kind of support will he get at college? 
Um, the college will endeavour to meet all the support requirements mentioned on the EHCP and we work with schools to plan transitions into college prior to students arriving. So we usually we would like to meet with the, the student and the parents and to plan that type of support, but we'll endeavour to meet all the support requirements, as I said, mentioned on that EHCP. Brilliant, Jean, thank you. And we've just had another question that's popped in that says, my son has an EHCP and would love to come to college, can he? I think we would probably say, yes, absolutely. Uh, we would meet to assess the support needs that are detailed in the education, health and care plan and work really hard to be able to deliver on those um, requirements that are in there. Um, just one more, I think. Uh, Jean, uh, it's just popped on. Um, I need support with my maths. Would I be able to have this at college? And if I can, what kind of support will this be? Again, that could be in-class support, out-of-class support. Again, strategies. Um, we can work um, sort of doing sort of, sort of blended support so they can come to some sessions and we can assess and then we can give some strategies to the teachers. Um, and we can sort of do overlearning. We have a base room so students can come after class, during classes um, and days that they're not in college and they can receive additional support um, outside those planned sessions that we also put forward. Jean, fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to pick up one last question before we move on to the next slide, because um, it ties into the kind of support that we provide. Uh, would I be able to meet the tutors before I come to college as I'm really worried about what college will be like? So. Um, Yes, obviously that's an option and we do that a lot. We have a really um, strong transition program that we work with students, usually through the summer term and the summer holidays, um, so that they can come onto campus and find out what college is like, get used to the corridor spaces, um, walking around the campus and get used to the classroom spaces and then meet the staff they'd be working with as well. Jean, I don't know whether you want to add anything to that before we move on. Um, I would just say that at the moment we're working with schools um, on annual reviews and students are being invited in um, now for transition sessions to meet with the team to start building those relationships. And we've also got the strong mentoring program that supports that we can sort of work with students now and getting them ready for that at start in um, September next year. Fantastic. Thank you, Jean. So thank you to Jean and Nick for contributing to that section of the presentation as well. We are one team at Crawley working really hard together to deliver the best learning opportunities we can. And so now I'm going to hand back to Dean, who's going to talk you through the next steps before we answer the other questions that we've got in the chat. So the next steps. So firstly, what you want to do is think about what course you want to study or what career path you may wish to take. You need to fill in an online application and we'll have the address at the end of the presentation. You'll then be invited to an interview. If the college is open, that's the point at which you would be shown around and shown the resources. And obviously you'll meet um, the teachers there at the interview. And after that interview, you'll receive an offer. It's really important that you, that you accept the offer and you notify us because that takes you to the next stages and all of the transition that, that Vicky was talking about. Um, we'll start to engage with you all through the summer and keep you informed about the progress of your application and the next steps. Some of the courses will have GCSE minimum requirements. So we will have people on hand to give you advice if your results are not quite what you expected or your results might be better and you might choose a different path. Um, but we will have days set up once the results are out. Um, your education sorted. Our yes days will be there to have people on hand who can advise you on your next steps. But I would say that the college offers a range of levels and there is a starting point for everyone. And as we said earlier, if you've not achieved those GCSEs, we will work with you and keep working with you until you get those GCSEs to get you on that programme that you really want. Once all that's gone through, we'll keep in contact with you through the summer. Uh, and then in September, you'll be ready to go and you'll join our family at Crawley College. Okay, Vicky. Brilliant, Dean. Thank you so much. So we've got a few more questions that have been coming into the chat. So we're just going to take those live as we um, move forward. So this one, maybe Dean and I could probably answer together, I think. Um, I can't decide if an apprenticeship or a T-level is the better option for my child. What would you say are the deciding factors in making that choice? For me, the T-level the and the apprenticeships are almost the same. They're, they're just that one is more time in college and one is more time in the workplace. Both of the, the qualifications will prepare you for the world of work. Um, I think that the T-level, in a sense, is something that will go on regardless of the COVID situation. Obviously, apprenticeships, some areas are very strong at the moment. 
uh, you know, as Boris has done, we're building out some of this. So construction is still very strong. Some of the other sectors are not quite so. But I think either route is a fantastic way into getting the career way, the career pathway that you want. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Dean. And then we've got um, a couple more questions about T levels. Um, can you go to university with a T level? Yes, absolutely, you can. There's a significant number of universities that have said they will accept the first T levels, which will be completed in the summer 2021. Am I right? No, 2022. Um, so there's a bit of time um, for universities to get more familiar with those qualifications, but they have committed to accepting learners to progress into university with those qualifications. And the second one that we've just got here about, do I have to find the placement myself for T-levels? Uh, work experience and work placements are a key part of um, the uh, study programmes that our 16 to 19 students will study. We do have some industry placement officers who are actively working with employers to be able to um, find placements for you to satisfy the uh, criteria of the courses. But if a student can find their own placement, fantastic. We'll then put all the health and safety checks in place that we need to, to be able to um, facilitate that and support you to be able to access that placement. But there is a team in our Progression Plus um, Centre who is able to help you to get in touch with employers and source those placements for you as well. I think we're coming to the end of our questions. I know that my colleagues have been actively answering things in the chat as we've been talking. So if there is anything else that anybody would like to ask, please just pop it in the question and answer boxes and we can pick them up in the time that we have left together this morning. If you do have some questions and we didn't get around to answering your question or you haven't had the opportunity to type it into the chat because you're uh, working um, on a phone or you haven't got that access to that space, um, please do get in touch with us and check our frequently asked questions on the website. Um, alternatively, you can contact us directly and the email address is on the screen at the moment. We have had another question that's just popped in that says, what's a day at college like? Well. Two days at college are never the same for us. Uh, for our students, I think there's maybe a bit more um, stability with their timetables. So Nick, I don't know whether you want to give uh, an answer to that one in terms of what you could expect your timetable to look like um, or whether you want me to have a go. I can have a go, Vicky. No problem. Um, so a day at college very much depends on what course you're doing. Generally speaking, most students attend three to four days a week. Some students on some programs are attending every day, but generally it's three to four days. If you're doing English and maths, you tend to have a slightly uh, fuller timetable because you've probably got, got to go to those lessons too. Um, most lessons start at nine o'clock in the morning and most of your lessons finish at about uh, four, four o'clock, somewhere around there. Um, and in between your lessons, you'll be given opportunities to go and have a break. So there are lots of opportunities to go get something to eat in either Express 58 to go and chill out in the student union space, um, which students designed last year. So it's a space set up by students for students, which is fantastic. So you can go and play pool, you can go and do um, play foosball, go and play PlayStation, or go and watch a film um, and just chill out for a while in between your lessons. You tend to normally get anything between half an hour to an hour for lunch, and then you'll have either another lesson or another two lessons um, until you go for the end of the day. Generally speaking, most lessons are an hour and a half um, and uh, with a break in between. Uh, and that's obviously to take into consideration all the practical elements of um, the work that you'll be doing on particular courses. So um, I think that's probably about it, I think. I think I've covered that in the main. Brilliant, thank you, Nick. Um, we've just had another question that's popped in about, do I have to wear a uniform? So obviously college is different to a uh, school environment. So we don't have a, a uniform that you would wear. We would expect for students to be dressed appropriately for study. So in some areas there are uniforms that we would be able to, that you would be able to buy, um, which fulfill your um, uh, course requirements. So for example, if you're going to do hospitality, we would expect you to have chef's whites for the work you're doing in the kitchen and a uniform for front of housework when you're working in the restaurant. Um, but aside from that, there isn't any specific uniform requirements just to attend college. 
There's a question that's popped in on the chat, I think, um, that says, is, it, is there a specific um, session that's going to come up online to outline the engineering possibilities? Um, yes, there will be soon. We are going to run some subject specific online events um, that will focus on particular curriculum areas. So you can find out more about the courses in detail. They'll be delivered by the heads of learning and some of the teachers in those areas to give you a really good insight into the um, courses, the details of the courses and the facilities we offer. So please check the um, website because those will be popping up um, over the next couple of weeks and we did also do quite a number of um, sessions during the summer when we were in the first lockdown where staff were talking about curriculum areas and the courses that we offer. So there's a bank of videos on our website um, on the open day page under the subject sessions where you can watch those films from the summer as well to get a little bit more detail. So thank you Adam for that question, it's really good um, to know that you're looking for more specific information. Okay, I think we may be coming to the end of our questions. I'm just going to wait to see if there's anything else that pops up in the next uh, few seconds. As I said earlier, if there are questions that you haven't been able to ask, ask us or there are things that you think of once we've finished the session this morning, please just get in touch by the email that's available on the screen at the moment um, or give us a call um, when we're colleges back open on, from Monday morning and we'll find somebody to give you the answer to the questions that you've got. I think we're probably just about there. There's nothing else that's popping in on my screen. So thank you so much everybody for being with us this Saturday morning and participating. It's been great to host the event for you this morning and we really look forward to seeing you when we can in person um, and hearing from you soon with your applications. So thank you to my team who got out of bed on a Saturday to come to work rather than having their weekend. Mm -hmm. I hope everybody enjoys the sunshine um, and we look forward to greeting you on site as soon as it's safe to do so. Thank you very much everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>